If you've ever wanted to feel like a Peter McKinnon knockoff, there you go. That's basically his intro song. <laughs> Music, sound effects, a revamped storefront. Stream Deck 5.0 is here, and it brings a lot of crazy updates for free to breathe quality of life into your existing Stream Deck, Stream Deck Mini, or Stream Deck XL, and I am stoked to share it with you today because, oh boy, this is a pretty cool update. I'm Eples Vox, the Stream Professor, and while on the surface, it may not look like much has changed with the Agata Stream Deck with this new software update, there are a lot of tweaks happening behind the scenes here, and some free resources given to you as well, which are pretty mind-boggling if I'm being honest here so if we if you've updated your app here it may not look too super different you don't get a whole lot of new integrations or anything like that just yet although there are apparently a ton of bug fixes involved here but you now have this new little RGB looking icon with a plus here that you click on and this is the new storefront for the stream deck now don't get too caught up on the name store. As, a, as far as I can tell, they haven't actually sold anything through it. It's all just free stuff, uh, but it's a way for you, you know, it's like an app store. It's a way for you to access, search, and find different plugins and now icon packs, music, and sound effects for your stream deck, which is pretty bonkers. So here on the Discover page, it will just be recommendations. So for right now, it's all the new stuff. So you got the Elgato Wavelink integration. Uh, they partnered with VBI Visuals by Impulse to do the first wave of uh, icon packs that aren't by Elgato. They have some from Elgato and some from VBI. You've got stuff for the Control Center for their lighting, which by the way, I forgot to turn mine on. So if I press that button, bam, it comes on. Uh, and then, of course, you get a what's new of the new Stream Deck update, which we will go through together here. So that is pretty neat. You get the voice mod plus Stream Deck pairing and all of that. So that's the Discover tab. And, of course, you can just search for stuff. So, for example, if I search for, uh, I don't I don't know, uh, CPU, we get plugins. Easy. No icons or anything yet, but that's fine. But let's start actually searching. So if we go to the plugins tab, this is where you can find additional integrations or functionality that you can add to your Elgato Stream Deck. So by default, if we close this here, it ships with integrations for OBS Studio, a soundboard is built in, integrations for Elgato Game Capture, uh, Streamlabs OBS, Twitter, Twitch, uh, some of these are custom that I have added, Twitch Studio, Wavelink, you know, all the Elgato stuff, of course, but your streaming sites and things like that. But you can add more to it through the plugin. So by default, it's just going to show a list here. I don't think this is necessarily like alphabetized, but it's just a big list based on similar stuff it's recommended before. But you can get showing the current CPU usage. You can get voice mod integration. I don't know why I still have that installed since I don't have voice mod. So I'll uninstall it. I've got us control center, Twitch. You can get an analog clock if you want to be less efficient for some reason. You can get a dedicated audio mute button for specific uh, devices in Windows. you got Streamlabs integrations. Uh, we're going to install that, see what that entails. You get the ability to toggle or set active audio devices, which feels pretty powerful. Philips Hue control, Shadow Play control, controls for Zoom, uh, counters, if you just want to track the number of times you press a key, advanced launchers and stuff from Bar Raider. He's been developing some crazy stuff I want to look at at some point because you get advanced launchers, you get his... Uh, Windows mover and resizer and so you can like automatically set up a layout of windows and where they go and things like that Which is pretty neat uh, integration for the bit focus companion app, which is pretty neat You get the hardware info uh, Utility which I have here which has my temperatures and my GPU usage and things like that pretty neat But then you have actual sorting so obviously I could scroll here forever to see a whole bunch of these but then obviously you can sort them you can uh, Look through by the different tabs of the categories just like a normal app store and so we've got audio meters, we've got more integrations, TeamSpeak, uh, integration for RME audio interfaces, Cubase interfaces, VBAN, FUBAR 2000 integration, pretty sick, developer tools, integration for video, Visual Studio, Unity, displays your public IP address, maybe don't do that, engagement, so you got the alert services, things like that, finance, you get stock tickers and crypto tickers, okay. Uh, games, you get the disco effects, you get memory games, you get a bundle of stream games like Pac-Man and Snake. That's pretty wild. Minecraft stats on your favorite Minecraft server. That would be pretty neat, especially for monitoring your own if you have it. Uh, stream Raiders battles, roleplay stuff. You get lighting controls. Again, we mentioned Philips Hue. We've got the Elgato lights, Nano Leafs, uh, Colo Light, LifeX, Lumia. Music is currently empty. Productivity, you get another light control. That should maybe be under lighting. <laughs> 
You get social, so you get uh, social tickers, YouTube, Twitch, things like that. I haven't actually tried. Well, I have one of these installed apparently. We got different utilities, as I mentioned, macro, extra macro support, VLC remotes, text file tools, lots of stuff we can explore in future videos. Finally, I've been wanting to get around to this. And then, of course, plugins for different video live apps, including Prism Live Studio, which is a great tool for streaming from mobile and things like that. We'll, we'll cover that in the future. All right. So those are the plugins, but then you get icon packs. So previously you've been able to buy or download icon packs for your I've got a stream deck and use them on your own. But this is a an option that gets them much more easily discoverable without you having to search around a whole lot. It's built into the app and lets you get them fairly quickly. So again, we have uh, icon packs built by Elgato themselves as well as visuals by Impulse. Of course, some of these here don't have any, like you can sort of see that if you like squint your eyes, you can see the icons, but we, we don't have any screenshots, so that's kind of lame, uh, but you do for most of these. So, for example, you can get, like, a matrix look. Again, this one doesn't have a, uh, <laughs> a preview, so we're just going to install it, see how it is. I really like this Legion one by Visuals by Impulse, though. I, I, I'm digging some of these icons, so I'm going to install that. It's just two clicks, and then you get the little download progress bar, and you keep going just like a Linux app store or whatever. You get Wavelink icons. You get NVIDIA-specific icons. I'll get that for, like, shadow play and stuff. So we got quite a few themes here based on your interests, and obviously they're kind of themed after specific games or specific styles. You got emoji kinds of symbols, and obviously there will be more here, and I can assume that different graphics designers and stuff will be able to partner with Elgato to introduce more of these in time. And of course you have the different sorting options. Obviously it's a little sparse at the moment, but I do believe that in time we'll see a lot more get integrated here. And again, these are all currently free, which is pretty sick. Then under music, we now have two categories. First is sound effects, which of course, the soundboard has been a part of the Elgato Stream Deck for a while. You get access to basically the entire library of sound effects, over 10,000 available, of sound effects and music tracks from uh, Storyblocks, which is pretty fascinating. And they have worked out the licensing here. That I will post a link to the copyright page in the description below, but they assure you it's royalty free. You will be covered. They have a uh, acquired distribution license so that it will cover you, protect you from DMCAs and all of that on Twitch and blah, blah, blah. And then you can contact them if somehow you do get a content ID notification on YouTube. Uh, but you get music and sound effects. Now, sound effects are, of course, what you would expect. And some of these I will actually use. So you got like a camera taking a picture. You get a pop. Uh, you know, some of these are stuff you've probably heard before since it's from a macro library. But these are things that would cost you money, typically. And you now just have the ability to use them freely to do goofy stuff with your streams, which is pretty neat. Like, there's tons here. Now, categories, dear lord, uh, good luck. <laughs> just like searching story blocks yourself, you're going to have quite a bit of a time actually like searching everything, but there are tons of options here. And so if you like one, uh, for example, we're going to go back to, actually, I want to uncheck effects. I'm going to search for glitch. And of course there's sorting options at the top here. So you got top rated, most popular, recently added and trending now. So I search for glitch. That one's a little harsh for a stream. I dig that one. I'm going to click download. We'll come back to this. Same thing with the music. You have over 10,000 songs available here. You've got tons of different genres. You've got instruments. You've got moods. Now, I will be, I have contacted my Elgato people. I will be seeing if we can get backing track up on this service. Because that would be sick if you're unaware. Backing track is the music service myself, my community manager, and our community are providing. It's royalty-free rock and heavy metal music that aims to fill the niche that most of these royalty-free services don't provide. So it's a little bit of something different and higher quality. Uh, and you can download that, backingtrack.gg, link in the video description. I'm going to be seeing if we can get this added to the service. Uh, so, for example, we can look for some music here. What kind of genres we got? You got kids and family. You got jazz. You got chill out. You got bumpers and stingers. I want to check that out. Bumpers and beast mode activated. Okay, what else we got? Try the new Elgato Stream Deck update today! If you've ever wanted to feel like a Peter McKinnon knockoff, there you go. That's basically his intro song. <laughs>
So this is pretty cool, and I love that you have access to this. But I'm gonna click download, and I'm gonna show you what I consider a, to be kind of a big flaw with the music integration at the moment that has me pretty disappointed after a word from this video sponsor, which is actually myself, because we're talking about I've got merch. For the very first time in my career, we have merch available. That will be available at evilsvox.gg slash merch. If you want to check it out for yourself, it's up on the Nebula shop. Uh, we talk about Nebula all the time here on the channel. And we currently have a fairly large desk mat, a pin, which is a one inch by one inch pin, and a sticker available. And we are going with this classic Blink VHS design. And we're going to be doing some limited runs of some different takes on this based on the different Blink VHS covers and things like that. And I am super stoked, not only because this is the first time that we have ever run merch and I am very proud with what we are running but also just because it's some pretty cool stuff and I have aimed to not just slap a logo on a t-shirt and hope that you buy it just for the sake of liking me and I want to make something that you actually enjoy so I really dig the desk mat that we have put together I really love the style uh, some of you all in our sub squad have actually given feedback to contribute to the design I think it looks great and I'm going to be rocking quite a few on my desk moving forward so go check them out, pins, stickers, and desk mats, and we're going to have some cool stuff in the future as well as we get time to rolling out. So again, that's eposfox.gg slash merch. Please go pick it up, and you get a free trial for 30 days of Nebula with your purchase as well. All right, so we have downloaded some sounds and sound effects and some music, and if we click open library here, it will actually show you the files. Now, you will notice these are not traditional audio files. These are dot stream deck audio files because I'm assuming this is some way to uh, uh, to combat piracy in some regard, even though they're freely distributed to the user, maybe just a agreement with Storyblocks or whatever so that they can't use them for whatever. Uh, I'm gonna see if 7-Zip will open it, it won't. Uh, I can see if Audacity will open it. I'm guessing that it's just the PCM audio or MP3 audio or whatever repackaged in this format. So if you could get something to open it up that ignores the extension the container itself and just tries to access the audio uh you might be able to figure it out people who are smarter than me slash have more patience than me will probably be able to figure it out of course audacity still has the ancient uh file explorer here app data roaming two channels sure oh dear god All right that that audio is kind of there so yeah the audio is just in there repackaged. I, I don't entirely know why they did this, but you, you don't need to steal the file, I guess, anyway. Worst case, you could play it back on the stream deck while capturing your system sound or something. Whatever. It doesn't matter. So you have this available. My issue here with the music implementation as is, is they didn't actually implement a music player. That feels really dumb to say out loud. But if we close this, there there's no music player built into this. What you have here... I don't know why Streamlabs got so big... What you have here is the soundboard, which allows you to play and stop audio. And we can click add music and it will add music from the store. That's how you download it. Unfortunately, it doesn't let you just add the songs you've already downloaded. I don't like that user experience because instead what we have to do, actually that's completely broken when we do it this way. What we have to do is click browse file. Now it takes you automatically to this folders for the, uh, to the folder with the stream deck audio files, but I, I don't know. I don't like this workflow. I would like to think that you'd just be able to populate a list of already downloaded files. Um, and the fact that this is a single, f there's no playlist here. There's no play through every s music that I've downloaded. The, the music and sound effects aren't even separated at the moment. I know I'm being super critical for what is really for a free update. They are giving you access to significant financial investment worth of stock audio here, which is a, a huge. I can't overstate how incredibly awesome this is to have given us as a free software update to a product that started coming out like four years ago. Really awesome. I want to make sure the praise is there for this. But currently there is no user experience to make music make any sense. Because yeah, I can reach over here to my smaller stream deck and play some music. Feels like a Halo soundtrack. Feels dead up like a Halo soundtrack. Which is cool as like a sound effect kind of music playback. Uh, but it doesn't make sense given the, the extent of audio that you get here, given that you could curate, it's all royalty free music. It's all mostly full length music. Some of it's sound effecty or whatever. Uh, it's all stuff that you would want a playlist and want to be able to 
just have playing in the background from your stream deck. Like, if I press this button, like, I want that to just, like, start, I, I want a button that just says play stream music. It goes through a playlist of music I have selected here and plays it in the background. And I don't think that workflow has been thought out at all. Now, knowing Elgato, they probably have thought about it, but they haven't started to implement it yet. And to me, that's kind of disappointing for as big of an update as this is. I realize at some point they just have to get it out of the door and sacrifices have to be made. But I would really have liked to seen them flesh this workflow out because otherwise, I think they're underselling what they have actually put on offer here. And that's kind of sad. Uh, but overall, this is freaking awesome. I love the new storefront. I love the new, you know, workflow for downloading plugins to get icons. We didn't even look at the icon pack yet, packs yet here. This is another situation, though. By the way, if you didn't know, you could actually remove categories from this with this little icon in the top right here. So, for example, if I don't want Streamlabs, I can just uncheck that. If I don't want Wavelink, I can uncheck that. Click Done and hides them. Another workflow that I'm not liking here is... There's no... Apply Icon Pack. Now, there's probably profiles. So if I say edit profiles, I'm sure I can maybe import them. I'm actually, I, I don't know. Nope, there is. Nope, never mind. That's not a thing either. So again, I feel like a workflow is not thought out here in that I downloaded an icon pack, but there was no easy way to just be like, yeah, turn all my icons into this. Like that doesn't exist. So for example, I come over here to LED off. I now have to browse icon. Now you do have your icon library here. This is a new workflow and a new user interface aspect that I absolutely love. And so you can sort, I'm going to make this bigger. You can sort by the releasers of that icon pack, or rather the icon the itself. So you've got the Elgato icon pack, the Legion icon pack, NVIDIA streaming icons, those things we downloaded. And of course, you can hide them if you want. You can click here to access the store. You can zoom in on them here. So I can be like LED off. Okay, I want that under Elgato. What does Elgato have that relates to lights? I can scroll down. It's mostly going to have the ones that were set by default because that's what we came up with, but that's fine. I can minimize this. I can come over here to Legion. Here we go. We got some sick icons. Here we go. Lights. So we are going LED off. So I'm going to choose that one. And then for LED on, I'm going to choose that one. Bam. So this is a much better workflow for choosing the specific icons. I do stand a little bit corrected, but there's no easy like apply all icon pack. Now they... They, if I'm being real here, they don't have the workflow, the means, the backend set up to detect what each of these icons were. And then the icon pack uploader would have to assign based on specific apps. And then as new things were added or removed over time, this would become outdated. So it's probably not feasible. But you think about like a system wide icon pack from like back in the day, at least you would just apply it and it would update most of them. And then you go back and manually change from there. But this is pretty cool. I'm digging again the Legion icons a lot. Um, and then we have the matrix here, so I could just set up. Unfortunately, you still can't assign buttons to, or icons to blink buttons. But I can come over here and just fill this with useless things and then come over and add the icons for them. So add matrix here, and you could do that like full screen wide with the same icon, or you can do different ones. And of course, these are the animated icons, so they will update on the stream deck itself in a GIF format, which is pretty neat. And now I have matrix things scrolling across my stream deck, which is pretty sick. But yeah, so that about wraps it up. Pretty big update, if I'm honest. This is like a huge update for the stream deck. Given it hasn't had a whole lot of love lately, it hasn't necessarily needed it either. Uh, but this is, uh, I, sh I don't want to like over exaggerate it. So it's not like anything too revolutionary, but in terms of a quality of life and hopefully opening the door for more plugin developers, icon pack designers, music people like our backing track uh, to join on board and get added into this, the better. And the real thing I think they need to work out is just the music playback workflow. They need a playlist based or folder based music player ASAP. And once they have that, I think this will be pretty rock solid. So thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech education and stream guides. Uh, I'll post the copyright page, as I mentioned, down below. As down there will be our music at backingtrack.gg. You can join our Discord to get free downloads for it. Discord.gg slash eposvox. And check out our merch at eposvox.gg slash merch. I'm eposvox, the stream professor. Let me know what your favorite part of this stream deck update is. And I will see you next time.